I know why you're all here. Just watch my review, Fifty Shades of Grey. Is it sexy? Well, I'm here, so now it is. Is it good? Well, it was originally written as a Twilight product, but then tweaked, you know, so it'd be a little bit more realistic. So of course it's gonna be one of the worst movies you'll ever see in your life. I'd rather watch Star Wars Christmas special in this movie. I'm getting out of this robe. But I digress. Let's move on and watch this trash. I know, I know. I didn't think I was going to do this review either, but yet here we are. <laughs> and after this, I feel like I'm going to have to read the Bible, take a bath in holy water, and get a brain enema. But that's only because it's so filthy, and not in a good way. We begin with watching Mr. Christian Grey taking a jog through a grey town, and we get it, ha ha, all of his ties are grey, the school is grey, the sky is grey. Like hell, everything in this movie literally has a grey tone in it, as it's supposed to set the mood. So after that opening sequence, this girl, Anna, is going to interview a fashion designer miles away because her friend can't go. Yeah, because I send my friends away a couple on a couple hour drive when I'm not able to do my own shit. Like, Anna is a freaking awesome friend! I mean, if you send a friend to go for a newspaper interview, you better give him some gas money. Yes, we get it, it's a sexy movie and there's phallic imagery. Okay, you don't have to rub it in our faces. Oh, that came out bad. So Anna goes into the interview and asks Christian some questions about the key to his success and all that blah 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 boring stuff. But during the whole interview, both of the actors seem uncomfortable with each other, as if they know what's going to happen in the movie. And Gray, Christian I should say, I'll just use his first name Christian, keeps walking around the room making everyone in the audience feel uncomfortable. Also, what's that sexy pencil thing she's trying to do? It just looks so awkward, not so well done. Also, I love in the middle of, of the interview, he cancels his meeting because he'd rather think about his own horniness than have a business meeting with some important people. Mr. Gray, your next meeting is in the conference room. Cancel, please. We're not finished here. Seriously, how's this guy this rich when he keeps ditching his business meetings for sex? Unless his business is taking care of business. Which in that case... Anna comes back home to her friend and tells her about the interview and how it went. Anna, the next day, gets invited to hang out with some friends that night and we see her working in a hardware store. And of course comes along stalker Christian, coming to pick up some supplies for his BDSM room. What a pleasant surprise, Miss Steele. Don't worry, we'll find out about that later. <clears throat> Just Anna. And of course he comes instead of sending one of his handy people to buy some stuff, like most billionaires do. And of course Christian travels 90 miles away to a small town hardware store. Oh, I know why that happened, because it's the only hardware store within 90 miles of Seattle. I mean, not like there's a Home Depot around within, you know, t a couple miles, right? F me! The next day, Anna and her friend are doing a photo shoot for the magazine Anna Friend works for. They sit down and Christian keeps making awkward gestures towards Anna. He keeps doing this throughout the whole movie. Just awkwardness and this guy being a prick and making everyone uncomfortable. Later, they go outside and, of course, here's one of the Twilight references. Remember when Bella in Twilight almost died from that car? Well, Christian saves her from a bike. Watch it! F***ing bikers! What a psycho. Later that night, Anna and her friend go out to a ratty bar, and Anna decides to drunk dial Christian. Christian asks Anna if she's been drinking, and immediately starts bossing her around. Listen to me. I want you to go home right now. You're so bossy! And Anna does an impression of what's gonna happen in this movie. Stay away from me, Anna. I don't want you. Get away. Come here, come here. All of a sudden, magically figures out where Anna is and tells her he's coming for her. I'm sorry, I don't... Stay where you are, I'm coming to get you. Okay, that is next level creepy shit. I'd be terrified if any girl I was dating did that to me. At the bar, Anna's friend tries to kiss her, and then Christian steps in to stop them from kissing, allowing for him to be viewed as a hero. And then Anna gives my impression of this movie. <coughs> he then takes her back to his hotel, and then puts pills and orange juice by her bedside that say, Eat me and drink me, as if she's in Alice in Wonderland. But seriously, I wouldn't trust these pills or know what's going on. She doesn't even seem panicked or anything. Christian later comes in and lectures her about the dangers of drinking, and then takes off his shirt and tells her, If you were mine, you wouldn't be able to sit down for a week. And weirdly takes a bite out of her toast. Just tell me, is this sexy? No? How about this? No? Not good enough yet? Okay. How about this? Got toast! That is pretty good toast, actually. 
I gotta go take a shower. And while he's in the shower, you might want to, you know, get dressed, call a taxi, and get the hell away from this weirdo! And Anna asks why Christian brought her to the hotel. And of course, stalker Christian has this to say. You're here because I'm incapable of leaving you alone. I'm very concerned. Later, when Anna is leaving Christian's room, Christian pulls a Sheldon Cooper from the Big Bang Theory and tells Anna that he won't touch her unless he has her written consent because he believes in a sexual roommate agreement that we can all joke around later when we get to it. I'm not going to touch you. Not until I have your written consent. What? Yeah, that's right, what? Later, Christian and Anna go on a helicopter ride to his penthouse, which is a reference again to Twilight, where Edward is flying through the woods with Bella. They arrive, and then he takes her to his sex dungeon, and he explains that he likes displaying women to get off. If you actually watch the movie and listen to their conversation, you can clearly see that Christian is forcing her to be abused when he gets mad at her. Okay, this is where I draw the line. I'm all for that kinky stuff, but you never, ever, let that stuff leave the bedroom. And this is the problem with the whole movie, because you never let the outside influence what happens in the bedroom, and never let the bedroom take course outside in the real world. That's what role playing is for. For example, if they got in an argument on where to eat, and Anna's all like, Hey, I want some fried chicken! And Christian would say, No, I want Asian food! He'd punish her in the bedroom, even if Anna didn't want it. So later, Christian shows Anna where she'd be sleeping on the weekends, and he basically wants her as a booty call. And then they go and do the nasty, as it is her first time. They wake up the next morning, and then Christian's mom pops in for a visit. Christian! Shit. Oh. It's my mother. She wants lunch, but then Christian shoes her out by saying, I was just showing your mother out. Excuse me. Yeah, what an asshole. She raised you from the sewers and you treat her like that? My mom would kick my ass if she heard me say something like that. Seriously, this guy, what an asshole. I hate him and so do you. Christian then takes her home, not with a helicopter, but instead with a car ride. Just so we can have the scene where they're walking in the woods and Christian explains how he was abused as a kid, how he lost his virginity, and his introduction into BDSM. Anna arrives home and Christian gives her the roommate agreement explaining how everything would work out between them, and then they have a weird conversation where Anna asks if Christian will be ordering her around, and Christian replies, Oh, I hope so. Like, that's being kind of manipulative. She's not like a pizza! You can't just order her around! Well, unless she was one of those mail-order brides, because I hear you can mail those. Anyway, she reads the sexual roommate agreement and then starts learning about the rules of BDSM, the safe word, all that stuff. But a lot of the stuff is ridiculous. In the roommate agreement, the sexual roommate agreement, I should say, you can't get drunk or have sexual relations with anyone else. Now, he did say that you cannot do drugs, but you know what? I agree on that because drugs are bad. Okay. But the rest of this isn't sexy, kinky fun. It's just controlling, manipulative, and it's amazing this guy even has women talking to him. Like, f this guy. Seriously. Later, after reading the roommate agreement, he breaks into her house, opens a bottle of wine, and just makes himself at home. Uh, creeper alert. Somebody call the police, please? What? What do you mean he's too rich to arrest? Well, come on. I mean, you, you know who was running for president, right? Yeah. Uh-huh. Oh, okay, okay. Go. No, I got it. I got it. Yeah, it ain't gonna happen. Anyways, Anna goes back to Christian's work, and they have a meeting about the sexual roommate agreement. This is actually one of the best parts. Why? Because it's so awkward and hilarious in a way. The submissive shall submit to any sexual activity demanded by the dominant and shall do so without hesitation or argument. <laughs> I mean, look at his expression. Sting. I'm all ears. Strike it out. <laughs> and one of my favorite parts that pretty much shows how dumb Anna is. What are butt plugs? This is the main character, ladies and gents. It's a plug? and it goes in your butt. One more thing that bothered me was this shot. I know it's her reflections, but I feel like it looks like this. Yeah. Oh. Okay, that hurts. Later, Anna graduates, and then we go to a dinner. And later, Christian starts spanking Anna because she rolled her eyes at him earlier. Anna doesn't like the punishment, and later, as her mom calls her, she's crying because she's not too sure why she's putting up with Christian's shit. Her mom does offer for Anna to come see her soon, which she does later without Christian's permission, of course. Later, Christian buys her a new car, and of course, there is a new set of car keys, and holy hell, how do they get in her house right away? I am prepared for any businessman wanting to break in here and buy me a new vehicle. 
Later, after another sexy scene, they go to dinner, and Christian gets mad at Anna for going to Georgia without his permission. She tells him that she's a relationship type of person, and he's mad because she's starting to change him from being a controlling sexual roommate agreement douchebag into a guy who's into relationships. Let me touch you. Let me. That night, he talks to Anna about his mom and how she was a crack addict, and we're supposed to feel sorry for him. Well, nothing you say right now, blaming it on your past, will not change how we feel about you. Jerk! The next day, Anna goes to Georgia, and the day after that, guess who? <laughs> guess who strikes again? That's right, Stalker Christian, everyone! Stalker Christian strikes again! And he finds her in a hotel, restaurant type setting, I don't know, a uh, stalker alert! What are you doing here, Christian? I came to see you. The next day, they go fly around in a local lighter as a date, and then Christian gets a business meeting call. And of course, Anna goes back to visit Christian. And there's another sexy scene as he ties Anna up. Later that night, Christian is playing the piano, and Anna says, Everything you play is so sad. She tells him she wants to talk, but he's like, No, I don't want to talk like normal people. I want to mope around. We should be talking. Like normal people? It's not a phase, Mom! If I want to mope around and be depressed, I can do whatever I want. Gosh! As they're arguing, Anna asks Christian why he wants to hurt her, and Christian tells her, If I told you, you'd never look at me the same way again. And she tells him she's not into it. What if I told you that I feel the same way about being punished as you do about me touching you? Would you still want to punish me then? No. But that doesn't mean I wouldn't need to. Why? Anna, stop. Why do you need to? Because it's the way I am! See, this is the problem with this movie. Being kinky in a relationship, that's cool. That's cherry and healthy. But something like this where he has to punish her every time they disagree, that is an abusive, unhealthy relationship. Oh, also... Here's my favorite part. Because I'm 50 shades of fucked up. He said it, guys! He said it! We're done! We can go home now! Have a fiesta! Woo! <laughs> Why did I even play that song? I'm, I'm, I'm not even Mexican. Anna then decides to tell Christian that she wants him to show her how bad he can be to her. So, Christian takes her to their playroom and spanks her hard with a belt six times. Eventually, Anna comes to her senses and tells Christian to leave her alone, as she's going home the next day. Christian begs her not to leave, but she's going. Anna asks for her car so she can drive home, but he says that he sold it. I'd like my car back. Taylor already sold it. And that his assistant will take her home. Again, seriously, f*** this guy. He sells her car and then says, oh, it's okay, I'll send you the money back later. Yeah, I'd like my car back. Ass No. Anna. Christian. The movie then does end with Anna at home and flashbacks of her and Christian play. And finally, it's done! It's over! Thank God no one has to deal with this monstrosity ever again! Uh oh, uh oh, oh no, no. No! Hi everyone, Jerditon here. Thank you so much for watching this video. And if you like this video, please subscribe so that way you can always stay updated. Also, I suggest checking out some of my other reviews here as well, such as Star Wars Battlefront on the left and Jurassic Park games on the right. Thanks again.